Well, hello there. Tonight we're going to continue working on our Raspberry Pi Pico projects and uh, we're going to try to add some external interrupts to the project. Um, as you know in the last video, if you watched it, I got my uh, RGBW LEDs working and those seem to work flawlessly. Uh, so now I need to add six external interrupts to the unit and see if I can handle inputting six external interrupts while simultaneously outputting those LED strings. Uh, and that's what I want to try. Uh, just a spoiler, it's not working very well. I'm, I'm having some problems. Uh, could very well be my code because uh, I'm definitely a novice at uh, coding in Python uh, and, and uh, MicroPython even more so. So, uh, so there may be something uh, that I need to, to do that I'm not, uh, not taking care of right now. Uh, but I can't find any documentation that would lead me to believe I'm doing anything wrong. Uh, there's also a possibility that the MicroPython release that I'm using uh, has some problems in it still. They are labeled as unstable. And so it is very, very possible that they still are chasing some uh, memory bleed issues or something like that that they haven't resolved yet. I have tried every version of MicroPython for the Pi that I can find, uh, and they all either fail or the earlier ones don't support all of the things I'm using in my code, so they won't work. Uh, so pretty much I've tried all versions that will work, and they all exhibit the same problem, which is they will run for a random period of time and then lock up. And uh, that random period of time could be 20 seconds or three or four hours. So uh, the average time uh, with the code the way I have it set up right now is about 20 or 30 minutes and then it locks up. But, it, but it's not, I can reset it, start it, run it. Uh, one time it'll lock up after 20 minutes, restart it again. Uh, next time it'll run for two hours. So maybe it's a race condition or something. Um, I tend to blame myself first. I expect I'm doing something wrong. And maybe if there's anybody who ever sees this video, uh, they can let me know in the comments what the heck that is that I'm doing wrong so that I can fix it. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me start off by explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing. So currently, I'm using an STM32 microprocessor uh, known as the Blue Pill to run a conversion from a Bally pinball machine light driver board to an LED string. So what we do is we pull out the light driver boards, we pull out all of the incandescent lamps, uh, we uh, pick up the signals that had been going uh, to those light driver boards and we figure out which lights the MPU was attempting to turn on and then we turn on the appropriate LED instead. So I want to give you a quick overview of how Bally does their light driving and that describes what I need to input with my microprocessor. Uh, so if you look over here, uh, we have the uh, Bally MPU board, and uh, the lights is just a small function uh, of the MPU board. It does the digital displays, it does the solenoids, it uh, does the sound card, it does the flippers, it does a lot of other things uh, besides the lights, but a subset of what it does is the lights. And in the older machines, there was a single light driver board. Uh, as the machines got bigger and more bright, brighter, I guess, instead of more bright, they added an auxiliary driver board. Now, the auxiliary driver board doesn't drive quite as many uh, incandescent lamps. Uh, and in one 
machine that I've seen, and they might have done it in more, they use two regular uh, light driver boards. So a regular light driver board will drive 60 lights. Uh, the auxiliary board will drive 28 lights. And the way they accomplish that, took me a long time to figure this out because it isn't quite uh, obvious when you just kind of look at the board and figure it out. But uh, there is a main strobe that goes to the main LED driver board. I'm sorry, I keep saying LED. There is a main strobe that goes to the main lamp driver board. And there is an auxiliary strobe that goes to the auxiliary driver board. And there are four address lines that go to the main board, three of which also go to the auxiliary board. So when the main strobe is fired, the four address lines are, are latched in to a four to 16 line decoder. And for some reason, they only use 15 of those 16 lines. I don't know why. Uh, but they drive 16 lines down into a four by, or I'm sorry, they drive 15 lines down into a four by 15 uh, SCR matrix. And then sometime in the future, asynchronous to the strobe, a data light or up to four data lines will be activated, which will latch particular SCRs if that particular strobe line is activated. Now they're going to do these one line at a time. So line zero will be active and they'll set zero, one, two, three, or four of those, which will latch the SCR. Then they step to line one and they reset this to something else. And then they step to the next one, reset it again. They continue on through through all 15 lines uh, that they're using. And then they go to the auxiliary board and they step through the seven lines uh, with four bits latching those. So what I have to do is I have to catch a main strobe and an auxiliary strobe and when those strobes go off, I have to read in the data that is on four address lines and preserve that. Then, when sometime in the future, a data line goes up, and these data lines don't all go up precisely at the same time, there's a little lag between each one. Um, as the data lines come up, I need to capture the fact that that data line occurred and uh, store that information. So what I've done is I've used six interrupts on my STM32, uh, one for the AUG strobe, one for the main strobe, and four for the data uh, to run uh, my little routine. And the way it works is uh, if a data line activates, it latches it in as a one and it just keeps it adds those up as, as far as the bits are concerned. And then when the main strobe occurs, it says, okay, that data was for the last strobe. So store that off in the last location, the last address that was brought in and latch a new address. And then now start waiting for more interrupts to occur on the data lines. And when you capture those, save those off latch the address again and continue on. And it's a little bit convoluted, but because of the asynchronous nature of the data, I don't know when it's going to occur. Um, it would be a real pain to, uh, to try to do this any other way. There's no strobe line uh, with the data. It, the data is the strobe. Uh, so uh, I could possibly with the Pico uh, scan this. Maybe I could use a second core and scan it in a second core uh, and just, uh, just do polling, reading these bits to see if they've come up or gone down and stuff like that. And then that would probably work because it's fast enough to accomplish it and it has a spare core. So if I dedicated a core to that, that would probably work. But I wanted to try to accomplish it using interrupts. So uh, let me grab my phone and 
show you a picture of what I have on the table here, and then I will bring you back and show it to you in schematic form. Okay, you will notice my lights in the background. They should be blinking, but they're not. It has frozen. Uh, also, you will notice that the LED on the board is not blinking. It should also be blinking, but it is also frozen. And all I have here is uh, the same setup I had in the last video with the um, RGB. And I'm using the RGB lights, not the RGBWs, just because they fit on the table better. Uh, but I got the data going out to, to the lamp. And then I've just uh, connected together six input lines to one output line. And I'm... I'm using a timer to drive the output line, which registers as an input on the input lines, and those are connected up to interrupts. That's all I've done. Um, so let me take you to show you a schematic because it's easier to see. I mean, I can, I can kind of bring you in here and show you my crappy soldering job, but it's not worth it. So uh, let, me, let me bring you up and show you a schematic, which is a lot easier to see. Okay, here is my setup. Uh, I have uh, the LEDs, and this is the same configuration, as I said, that I used before. Uh, GP16 is the output to the LEDs uh, and the ground wire, and that's all that's connected to the Pico. And on the back side, they're connected to 5 volts, which allows it to control the LEDs. Of course, I have 50 of these, not 6, but you get the idea. And then I've chosen uh, GP27 as my sender. Uh, and it's uh, just going to uh, activate, activate an interrupt and, uh, and come back up. And I'll show you how I accomplished that in the code. And I've declared GP22 as my alt strobe, GP17 as my main strobe, and 18, 19, 20, and 21 as my D0 through D3, respectively. It's, it's a very simple schematic. Okay, so now let me bring up the code and show you what the code looks like. Because it is also very simple. Try and keep my head out of the way here. Um, and a lot of this is the same as it was before. Uh, so I've, uh, I've, by the way, I've, I've set the number of LEDs to 250. Now I only have 50 connected. That really doesn't make a difference. It will clock out the data for 250 LEDs. Um, it, it just doesn't care how many you say until you run out of memory. Uh, anyway, as I said, the pin I'm using is 16. I'm not using the brightness control right now. Um, I set up a counter just to have something for my interrupt service routines to do. Um, and uh, I uh, earlier in the... the uh, the testing I was I was looking at the, uh, the milliseconds it took to accomplish uh, the interrupts. By the way, when I fire off the six interrupts, they occur within two milliseconds, which is more than adequate for what I need. Okay, so then we got the PIO code for driving the LEDs. That's the same as it was last time. Uh, and uh, here I set up pin 27 as an output named int sender or interrupt sender. Uh, and then I define, um, let's see, that, that uh, state machine and array are part of the LEDs, which was there before. Uh, I define a, a, a routine tick timer, and all it does is it uh, when it occurs, it's it sets the ins, int sender high, uh, which is wired to all of those inputs and should trigger some to interrupt. Okay, so then I have a main interrupt handler, an alt interrupt handler, a D0, D1, D2, a D3 interrupt handlers, and they're all almost identical except for the main interrupt handler. And the main interrupt handler uh, will uh, set the int sender value back low. So a timer is going to set the value high 
And then once the first interrupt occurs, it'll set it back low. Um, so down below here, um, oh, by the way, the, the, the pixel routines are the same as they were before. Uh, I also set up an LED pin uh, so that I can toggle that to see if the board, I'm trying, I was trying to figure out where the board was stopping and to see if, if I could figure it out, which I couldn't. It appears that it all stops, that nothing's, nothing seems to be running. Um, anyway, I, uh, the main int and alt int, I trigger on the rising edge. So those two interrupts should trigger. Well, let me go down to the timer first and take you through the, the way this thing is going to work. So I set the timer up to interrupt at 120 times a second. Um, the actual rate is about 60 times a second that the, uh, the interrupts are going to interrupt. So this is twice as fast. As, as it would really interrupt. Um, I have popped that all the way up to 1,200 times as fast, and the interrupts still seem to work. It, it maybe, maybe died a little quicker, uh, but it's not 10 times quicker. Uh, so, um, so 120 times a second, the timer will call the callback tick. And up in tick, as I showed you, it sets the int sender high, which triggers the main interrupt. And uh, the main interrupt, as I said, triggers on the rising edge. Uh, so, and that calls the main interrupt handler. So it pops up to the main interrupt handler and it uh, uh, sets the value back down to zero. So that may basically produces a pulse. Uh, and then I check to see if the count uh, divided by 250 is less than six. Now you go, what the heck are you doing there? Uh, well, I'm, I'm just, I just need to toggle the LED at a rate that's not too fast that I can't see it. And since, I, since every one of the interrupts is triggering the count, uh, the count may not go to 250 exactly. Uh, so what I'm doing, uh, by the way, the percent for those who don't know is the modulo command. So it, uh, it divides count by 256 and checks to see if the remainder is less than six. And if it is, it's, it's just rolled over another 250-ish worth of counts and I toggle the LED. So you can see that the LED toggle, toggle off and on. Um, and that's it. That's that's all I do in the interrupts. I mean, I they, they just sit there, they increment the count, and they leave. Now, I'm used to cleaning up an interrupt service routine after I leave it, you know, but but there doesn't seem to be any cleanup that I can find in Python to do. You just declare the handler and it goes. Yeah, you know, no push stack, pop stack, nothing, nothing like that. So I'm not exactly sure that this is correct, but it's, but it's from all the information I can find, it seems correct, and it also seems to work for quite a while sometimes. Uh, and then last, the very last thing I do is just uh, output the uh, the different colors to the uh, uh, to the lamps, and I added a while true loop so that it'll just sit there. And it'll just continuously show these lamps over and over and over again. So if uh, I hit run, and now I'm going to bring you back to my uh, handheld camera here, and I'll show you what this looks like when it's running. And you know what it looks like because uh, you've seen it run in the last video. I mean, that's... That's the exact same routine flashing the LEDs. Uh, the only thing I did actually is I, I cranked the value down uh, so that, uh, that they're not at full brightness. But uh, I'm not using that brightness multiplier up at the top. Uh, I actually uh, decreased the values 
where I define what the colors are. Uh, but you can also see that the LED is blinking there. Uh, so um, um, I thought maybe the driver that was driving the displays out might have locked up, but the interrupts were still running. And if that was true, that LED would still be blinking when it locks up, uh, but it isn't. Uh, so that's it. I mean, you can see uh, we've already run through uh, bunches and bunches and bunches of, of instructions without it locking up. And like I said, sometimes it'll lock up in a couple of minutes. Sometimes it'll take three or four hours uh, before it locks up. So I'm very confused. Uh, and I'm probably going to put this away for a while and maybe wait for the MicroPython release to become a little more stable because uh, they might have a memory leak or something in there that they just haven't addressed yet. Uh, so anyway, that's where I'm at. I did want to show you guys something just in case uh, you did not know this, uh, but the LEDs are capable of holding the last state they were given without any other signals coming from the microprocessor. So while you can see uh, this thing has now stopped at the green, it's, it's random where it stops, uh, but you can see that my microprocessor is not plugged in. It's got no light on it. There's no power. It is not doing anything. It's not sending any signals to those LEDs. They're just holding their last state. So when this thing freezes up, it looks just like this. And I'm assuming there is nothing being sent out to those lights. So uh, just to kind of just to wrap up, you can look here where I, uh, I knocked the values of these lights down from 250 to 25. Basically, I just took a trailing zero off of all the numbers uh, just to decrease the value so the lights weren't so brilliantly bright. Uh, and, uh, and that's all I have in here. I, uh, I don't know if I've done something wrong. If anybody out there uh, does, please let me know. Uh, I can't find any information about how many pins you can have interrupt at the same time. Uh, I would hope that four isn't too many because uh, that doesn't seem like a lot. Um, but, uh, uh, but I don't know. The one thing I do plan on doing before I put this thing away uh, is actually drive the interrupt from an external source. I'm actually going to drive all the pins independently from an external source uh, just to see if that makes a difference because there is a synchronous relationship between me internally firing off the uh, the timer interrupt and the interrupt other interrupts going off that that could be having an effect with something and I can get rid of that timer interrupt completely if I uh, if I do this from an external source so that's about the only thing I plan to try uh, with this Hopefully, it'll show me something I expect. It won't change a thing. So, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, this Pico is a lot of fun to play with, but I am not sure it's ready for prime time yet. Um, if anybody out there has any clues on how to fix this problem, please let me know. Uh, and I'll continue to play with this, but I don't think I'm switching from my STM32s anytime soon. So thanks a lot for watching, guys.